Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the power of God unto salvation. That's right, that's Paul's My Gospel. So let's take a look at birth name, Carlos Ray Norris. Date of birth, March 10th, 1940. Place of birth, Ryan, Oklahoma. Occupations, martial arts instructor, actor, producer, writer. Claim to fame, professional world middleweight karate champion, 1968 to 1974. And his name is Chuck Norris. Now, if you don't know who I grew up studying Chuck Norris, I am, or I was, a martial artist. I earned my black belt about 20 years ago, and Chuck Norris had the fastest kick. He had a 60-mile-an-hour kick, if you did not know that. If you study Chuck Norris's early, you know, before acting, he was an incredible martial artist. But when Chuck Norris was asked, are you a spiritual man? Do you have God in your corner? He answered, oh, yes. I definitely feel I do have God in my corner. I've been very fortunate that way. I'm very spiritual. I'm a very religious person. There's too many things in life for us to cope with without the faith of God. I think that's why there has been so many suicides today. The kids don't have the strength of God in their hearts, and so they give up. As individuals, they don't have the strength to cope. That's why the third leading cause of death for teenagers in America is suicide. That's very sad. So that's what he has to say about God. Faith in God. He never tells you, and neither do any of the other Hollywood stars that we've gone through thus far. They never tell you the gospel that saves you. Well, Paul does. And it's been in your Bible more than 400 years. And if you haven't trusted it, then you're not saved. And here's the gospel you need to trust. Only Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. How much more clear can it be? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Notice, it's not about repenting or being baptized for remission of sins and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. No, the gift that you get when you trust Paul's my gospel is your never dying soul is saved. No Holy Ghost gifting, okay? You're not in Acts 2. You're not the, Pente the church at Pentecost. You're not the church at Jerusalem. You're not Israel's church that gets the Holy Ghost and then they all speak in tongues. You ever notice that? Everyone thinks the church, the body of Christ, starts in Acts chapter 2. But yet, not everyone speaks in tongues. But when you read Acts chapter 2, they all spoke in tongues when they got the Holy Ghost. So how come when people claim they got the Holy Ghost, but they don't speak in tongues? Because they're not Bible believers. They lie to themselves. They lie to themselves that you have to repent and be baptized. They lie to themselves that they're following Jesus and following the Great Commandment and following the Great Commission. They lie to themselves. They, they're building God's kingdom. They lie to themselves. They're not Bible believers. Okay? By their own admission, they're not Bible believers. So let's take a look at, and we've been going through this study. This is part six now, and maybe or maybe not, but I am, Romans 14, 5, I'm fully persuaded that there's no salvation in this army, okay? And this is part six. Is there salvation in this army? I'm sorry, I can't find it. I can't find it on their statement of faith. They say on their statement of faith that the um, 
doctrine for Christianity today is in the Old and New Testaments. Well, then there is no Christianity if you're in the Old and New Testaments because Christianity is only found in Paul's writings. That's the church, the body of Christ. Peter never talks about a new creature. James never talks about a new creature. John never talks about a new creature. The Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry never talks about a new creature. Paul says there's no Jew or Gentile. Peter never says that. James never says that. John never says that. The Lord Jesus Christ never says that. Why? Because they were sent to the Jew. Galatians 2.9 Romans 15, 8, John chapter 1, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 15 tells us where James, Peter, and John and the Lord Jesus Christ were sent to. It wasn't Gentiles, people. They never talk about, James, Peter, and John and the Lord Jesus Christ never talks to you about his death, burial, and resurrection as payment for sins. Only Paul says that. John 3.16 has no resurrection. Isaiah 53 has no resurrection. Acts 2.38 has no resurrection. It's not the same as Paul's gospel. Paul's not saved until Acts 9. Okay, So from Acts chapters 1 through 8, Saul is persecuting the church at Jerusalem, which is the same church at Pentecost. From Matthew 16. I know this is hard. The only reason why it's hard is because you're believing your pastor and not the Bible. The only reason this is hard is because you're believing the commentaries and not your Bible. Read your Bible and believe it, and then see if anyone lines up with it. Then you won't have any problems. And if your theology doesn't line up with the Bible, something needs to change. The 1769 King James Bible is God's perfect words. If your theology thinks that the church, the body of Christ, starts at Acts 2, you need to change your theology and line it up with the Bible, God's perfect words. The 1769 King James Bible, okay, it's not the New International Version, it's not the New Living, it's not the English Standard Version, it's not the New American Standard, it's not the New King James, that is not God's perfect words. Those are versions of from the Roman Catholic, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, Pit of Hell. Okay. So let's take a look at the founders of the Salvation Army, where I can't find salvation anywhere. William Booth, that's the guy you're looking at on the pictures there. He looks like Santa Claus, you know. You know, Santa has the same letters as that of Satan. Isn't that peculiar? S A N T. A, Santa, S-A-N-T-A-N, Satan. Wow, same letters, only mixed up. Gosh, that's not the God imposter, is it? And then this guy looks like the God imposter. Why would, it, it, it's just crazy. And then he's outside ringing a bell, right? In a Santa suit. Only this guy doesn't need a Santa suit. Anyway, William Booth began the Salvation Army in 1865 as a means to help the suffering souls throughout London who were not willing to attend or even welcome into a traditional church. Thieves, prostitutes, gamblers, and drunkards were among his first converts to Christianity. And as his ministry grew, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which there's no such thing, there is no such thing as the gospel of Jesus Christ. John MacArthur wrote a book about it. There's no such thing. There's the gospel of the grace of God. There's the gospel of the kingdom. There's the gospel of the uncircumcision. There's the gospel of the circumcision. There's the everlasting gospel. There's a gospel given to Abraham. But gospel of Jesus Christ, I can't find anywhere in my Bible. But this guy's got it, and so does John MacArthur was spread far and wide to the poor, the vulnerable, and the destitute. So whatever he told to the poor, the destitute, was wrong because there is no gospel of Jesus Christ. But 
Though, and then he called himself General Booth because he was in this army, right? General Booth died in 1912. He laid a firm foundation for the life-saving work that the Salvation Army continues to perform today in over 100 countries. It's just like Goodwill, right? Salvation Army, you drop your stuff off there and you get a receipt. But they're saving souls, right? With the gospel of Jesus Christ. Catherine Booth was known as the Army Mother in her world, women had few rights, no place in the professional sphere, and a minimal presence in church leadership. They couldn't vote either. Yet, in her marriage to William Booth, she became an evangelist, preacher, theologian, and co-founder of the Salvation Army. A truly passionate Christian, Catherine believed that loving God, okay, this is what loving God means to her, okay, meant loving people through action. Her legacy of love, sacrifice, and service continues to shape the Salvation Army today. So no 2 Timothy 2.15, because that's how you show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. She was the seventh child of... Wait a minute. Sorry. Evangeline Booth is the seventh child of William and Catherine Booth. Eva Corey Booth was a gifted speaker, musician, and leader sent by her father to spread the Army's mission in North America. During her 30 years as a national commander in the United States, Evangeline was responsible for the volunteers who served as chaplains and donut girls during World War I and also for the division of the country into four territories. So is chaplains in your Bible? In 1934, Evangeline became the Army's fourth general. She left America on the highest crest of love and popularity she had ever known and retained her American citizenship until her death in 1950. So did you hear any? So I just covered three people. William Booth, Catherine Booth, and Evangeline Booth. Nothing about the death, burial, and resurrection. How about Joe the Turk? Though often considered a rude and even obnoxious rule breaker, Joe the Turk opened many important doors for salvationists across America. With an inherent passion for protecting the persecuted, he eventually traded in his drinking and smoking habits for a life as a Christian. So let me ask you this. What if I believe the death, burial, and resurrection that Christ died for my sins, his shed blood paid for my never dying soul, and now I'm in heaven. What if I never quit smoking or drinking? Am I saved or not? If you think your behavior determines whether you're saved or not, then you're not saved where he went on to serve as a spirited captain in the Salvation Army until 1925. Famous for his colorful ministry and attention-getting antics, Joe was often jailed for Jesus, and he became known as a spiritual father to thousands of formerly lost souls. You know, there are a lot of people that get jailed for Jesus, but is it because they were telling people the gospel of God's grace? Or is it because they're just running around spreading the gospel of Jesus? Hmm. A lot of people get persecuted, and I don't know if you've ever um, read any books about martyrs, but if you do, there are even websites about martyrs. Take a look at it. And you'll see, most often, when people get persecuted for Jesus, it's because they're performing water baptism. Take a look. It's not because they're telling people about the gospel of God's grace. People equate water baptism as Christianity, as part of Christianity, and that's horribly wrong. Paul baptized no one once the body of Christ was in place. 
Paul even said it. I came not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Yeah, he he baptized a few people, but once the body of Christ was completely in place and Israel was completely fallen, there were no baptisms performed anymore. Water baptism. And why do people think that when the word baptism is said, they equate it to water? Because there are 12 baptisms in your Bible and seven of them have no water. When you are saved, when you are placed into the body of Christ by the Holy Ghost, and that's the only thing the Holy Ghost is doing today, okay? He's placing saved souls into the body of Christ. That's a dry baptism performed without water. Read Romans 6, and don't put the word water in it because it's not there. But I'm going to tell you, churches, okay, and I was at one, I had a friend who was water baptized at a church, Alpine Chapel, right over here in Lake Zurich, okay? They got out of the water, and instead of giving them a towel, they gave them a t-shirt to put on that said Alpine Chapel on the front, and on the back it had Romans chapter 6, which again is a baptism without water. There's a baptism, there's three baptisms in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. There's the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there's the baptism of fire, and there's a baptism of water. What do you do with that? When you are following places that tell you to get water baptized, you're not following Jesus. You're following John the Baptist. And that's why the Baptist church is called Baptist, because they're following an Old Testament saint that got beheaded. They're not following Jesus. Be a Bible believer and you'll get it right. Eliza Shirley. Eliza Shirley pioneered the establishment of the Salvation Army in the United States. After faithfully serving with the Booths in London's East End part of the Christian mission, and notice that, I want you to look up, because they even say Paul's a missionary. Look up the word mission or missionary in your Bible. Tell me if it's there. A 17-year-old Eliza followed God's call in America. So God's call, what is that? That must have been pretty loud. I I don't know how many people had phones back then. but There she joined her parents, who had recently immigrated to Philadelphia for work, and swiftly began her work for the Army. Her humble mission grew into a nationwide presence of peace and hope for those most in need. Mission and mission work is always affiliated with some sort of church. There are no missionaries in the body, in the church, the body of Christ. Okay, you are an ambassador. You are a minister of reconciliation. Okay, not a missionary, and you are to see souls saved. First Timothy chapter two, verses three and four, and have all. You are to have all men to be saved. Okay, that's the will of God today that God will have all men to be saved, and once they're saved, this is the more difficult part, and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Get them saved first. Okay? Don't start arguing about, you know, what God's perfect words are, because you'll never get anywhere. They're not saved. Okay? One pastor said... Don't let the ignorance set the parameters of an argument. Okay? Because that's basically what's going on in this country, right? The ignorant are setting the parameters of the argument. We're losing this country, if you haven't figured it out yet, due to ignorance. Okay? George Scott Railton. And if you think we're losing this country, we may, we might be, but... After serving as Booth's family secretary in London, George went on to establish the Salvation Army's presence in New York. His talent for languages and love of travel also helped him pave the way for Salvationist work in France, Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, China, and Japan. In addition to creating 
Army songbooks in Zulu and Dutch and beginning the Army and Navy League for Salvation as servicemen around, away from home, Railton founded the Prison Gate Work for recently released prisoners. Isn't all that great? But how great is it if they don't have a Bible they believe? Do they ever talk about what is God's perfect words? Through this whole series, I read you their statement of faith. I read you the founding, the founders. I read you <clears throat> things about their organization. Is there one mention of the gospel of God's grace? Is there one mention of God's perfect words without error? So those two things you need to get right before you start any kind of ministry. It's a shame. All these people doing all these things for years, 30 years, 40 years with some organization and never understanding the revelation of the mystery, Romans sixteen twenty five, never preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, never making sure to have all men see what the fellowship of the mystery is, Ephesians 3, 9, and then making sure that they have God's perfect words, Psalm chapter 12, 6 and 7. He preserved them, and they're perfect. He puts his words above his own name, Psalm 138, 1 and 2. Do you? Do you put God's words above your name? Most people don't. They call themselves reverend. That's God's name. But they make that their own. It's just sad where we're at. Like I said, ignorance is going to be the fall of this country. Nothing more, nothing less. Samuel Logan Brengel, well known as a minister to the Salvation Army's officer and soldiers in the United States, Brengel served for 30 years. He believed that those who seek God, okay, Romans chapter 3 tells us there's none that seek God, but he's seeking God, burst into flame when they first touched him and that they can bring those left out in the cold to his light. I mean, do you believe, this is another guy who probably believes the church started in Acts 2, but he's not speaking in tongues, you know, these people are. To Brengel, the corpse was a sacred place from which the love and power of God could be communicated to all. Entire cities could be energized and lit up by the prayer of soldiers who caught the flame. So are you catching the flame? Or are you being a Bible believer? Are you trusting the gospel of God's grace to save your never-dying soul? Or are you trusting the Salvation Army where I can't find salvation anywhere? Thanks again for listening. As we conclude this series, my hope is, is that you're able to rightly divide the word of truth. You're able to see through the cults majority people, denomination, non-denomination, the cults that you know are cults, they're all cults. None of them believe God's perfect words, and none of them are preaching the gospel that saves you, the gospel of God's grace, and none are preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25. Thanks again. If you have any doctrinal questions, email me from my contact page at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com. Subscribe to my two YouTube channels. Check out my bookstore blog, which you can also subscribe to. And don't forget my study on Ephesians. Thanks again.